on, give me a hundred percent. Come on, come on, come on. Oh! Hey, I'm Tom, and I'm gonna show you how to make your WordPress site load faster. We're gonna be using GT Metrics as our primary tool, and I'll be covering everything step by step. Yes, I do have 100% as well as great Pingdom and Google PageSpeed Insights scores, but GT Metrics is the best tool. I'm going to be covering everything from hosting, which is the number one factor in the WordPress optimization guide, and I'm not going to refer you to low quality hosts like Bluehost, GoDaddy, or EIG. I'm going to show you cache plugins, Cloudflare, CDNs, slow plugins to avoid, how to find slow plugins on your website, optimizing images, why you should never use Google AdSense or external resources if you can. If you don't want to do that, I have a freelancer I work with. His name is BD Kamul on freelancer.com and he has a great portfolio of websites. He lives in Bangladesh, but besides the time difference, he speaks good English and he has a lot of good things to offer. i33 is really good too, but I will show you how to do everything step by step and have timestamps in the video description. So open up your GT Metrics report and let's do this! So load times are the primary metric we're gonna be focusing on. You can fix all the items in GT Metrics all you want, but the main thing you wanna focus on are your load times. And if you look at the WordPress optimization guide, the four biggest factors are your hosting. Guys, I know you're probably ready for a sales pitch, but there's no way around not talking about it. When people migrate from a low quality host to a faster host, it can reduce your load time by about seven seconds. SiteGround is good, Cloudways is good. Do your research on the WordPress hosting Facebook group. It's a great place to get unbiased opinions. GoDaddy is not good. Bluehost is not good. HostGator sucks. A2 sucks. The main hosts that are rated highly in Facebook polls are SiteGround, Cloudways, WP Engine, and Kingsta. Those are the four companies I recommend. And run your site through Google PageSpeed Insights and look at your server response time. Look at EIG. It's a mega corporation that owns over 83 different hosting companies, including Bluehost, HostGator, Site5, iPage. They have shareholders to please, so they don't care about you. They're going to overcrowd their servers, which they're infamous for, and fire support staff. Don't use anything owned by EIG. Do your research in the WordPress hosting Facebook group. Group, look at people who migrated and posted their load times. Don't listen to the affiliate test because it's hit or miss on which server you get. Just look at the evidence that's already out there from non-affiliates. I use Cloudways DigitalOcean plan which is managed cloud hosting and it's super good. I love it. I was using SiteGround about two weeks ago which was great but you can see the difference in my response times right here. I already had 100% GT metrics reports, but like I said, your load time is primarily controlled by your hosting. It won't fix these items, but it can greatly improve your load times. When choosing any hosting plan, you always want to look at the server resources that come with your plan. So for instance, SiteGround, as you upgrade plans, you get more server resources and you get what you pay for. So if you're running a WooCommerce site that requires more plugins and resource consumption, you usually want to use a higher plan that can support that consumption. And number of servers is one of the largest factors in the WordPress optimization guide. So that's what I mean by you get what you pay for, even on Cloudways. You can just upgrade your plan and yeah, it's going to be more expensive, but your load times are going to be better. So SiteGround is used by Yoast, they're recommended by WordPress. The only thing I don't like about SiteGround are their renewal prices. You can get one to three years of this promotional price, but after that it jumps to this higher price. What I did with my girlfriend is we signed up for three years of the Grow Big plan, and then after those three years we're going to move to Cloudways, but their promotional prices are the best shared hosting you're going to get. Afterwards you can migrate to Cloudways or stick with SiteGround because they are a really Really good shared hosting company. You can also check out Kingsta and WP Engine, but those are a little more expensive, start at $30 a month, mainly for high traffic websites. Just do your research, join these groups, look at Twitter, look at Trustpilot, and uh, avoid those low quality hosts. I saw a YouTube video from Darren, whatever his name is, recommending Host Papa, and he said he would use them on his own website. It's just not true. 
I have affiliate links to those four companies I recommend. You also get a discount if you go through them. They are SiteGround, Cloudways, WP Engine, and Kinksta. So if you wouldn't mind using those links, I would really appreciate it, and they are in the video description. But I at least wanted to provide you with an honest review because there's so much bad information out there. The easiest thing you can do to improve your load times is upgrade your PHP version. Log into your hosting account, find the spot to upgrade PHP versions, and make sure you're running the latest one. This alone can improve your load times by multiple seconds. It's super easy. The thing is, most websites aren't running the latest version, and the reason for that is your hosting company won't upgrade you automatically. You have to do this yourself. So if you've been on the same hosting plan for years and have never done this, chances are you're still running PHP 5.6. The reason hosting companies don't do this automatically is because it can break your website if you're running incompatible plugins. So you can always run this to check for incompatible plugins, but it does have bad reviews because the scan can stop a lot of times. So what I would recommend doing is upgrade and test the most recent version and just simply check your website for errors. If you don't see any, stay on the most recent version. A cache plugin is the one thing that will both improve your load times and fix a ton of items in your GT Metrics report. Look at the Facebook polls and you'll usually see WP Rocket, Swift Performance, and WP Fastest Cache are usually the top three. WP Rocket is a premium plugin, costs $49 a year, and I have a coupon in the video description. WP Fastest Cache and Swift are both free. But WP Rocket is better because it comes with a lot of features most cache plugins don't. And that means if you were to use WP Fastest Cache or W3 Total Cache, they don't come with database cleanup or heartbeat control, or they don't lazy load photos and videos, they won't host your Google Analytics tracking code locally, which will fix this item in GT Metrics. They won't serve Google Fonts locally either if you have Google Font errors, and some of them don't have options to set up a content delivery network. So WP Rocket has these all built in, so what you want to do is, depending on which cache plugin you're using, make sure that they have these features, and if they don't, install the plugins that I just went over to get those extra optimizations. But WP Fast Cache, I will show you how to set up very quickly. It's very easy. Usually you just <laughs> enable basically everything. And it also has options for Cloudflare and additional CDNs. If you're using a CDN, they have specific settings which you'll want to check their website for, but that's the gist of WP Fast Sketch. Very easy to set up. WP Rocket is a little more complex, but it's still not very hard, and I have a tutorial on my website which I keep updated at all times. If you're using WP Rocket, these are the settings. You can copy mine if you want. But the biggest thing that will fix items in GT Metrics is the File Optimization tab. So just like WP Fastest Cache, you'll see Minify HTML, Minify CSS, Minify JavaScript, and a lot of other options in GT Metrics. So this is the most important tab to configure. And what I would recommend doing is enabling these one by one and seeing how they affect your GT Metrics report. Because sometimes, especially when you Minify JavaScript files or CSS, it can cause visible problems on your website, in which case you would need to view the source code, find those problematic files, copy the code, and then paste it here to exclude the CSS that's having problems. That way you can still minify the page, just not that problematic file. Same thing with JavaScript. So like I said, test these one by one, make sure your website doesn't have errors, and especially the last two options, you should play with them and see how they affect your GT Metrics report, but that will fix a ton of items in GT Metrics. Lazy loading makes it so images and videos are only loaded once you scroll down the page and actually see them. So images can be kind of annoying to do this with because I don't want images constantly loading as people scroll down the page, but I do embed YouTube videos on my website. Those take much longer to load. So I have iframes and videos enabled, and I also replace the YouTube iframe with a preview image. This makes it so videos are only loaded once people scroll down the page and actually click the play button, which is exactly what this YouTube light plugin does. 
You can still copy my settings here. Here's my preload tab. Prefetching DNS requests. Bottom line, you want to go to this GitHub page right here and copy all these and all of these and paste them into WP Rocket. So what this does is if you have external resources on your website, like Google AdSense, Google Maps, even social sharing plugins can cause external resources or embedded Facebook widgets, Gravatars, Google Analytics, YouTube videos, a ton of things are external resources. And this helps browsers anticipate those so they can load them faster. It probably won't fix anything in GT metrics, but it does help improve the load times of those external resources. Advanced rules, I usually don't do anything. Database cleanup, if your cache plugin comes with database cleanup, you should usually run this every week or so. And just go through the options and make sure that you don't need anything that it's deleting. Post revisions, every time you save a post, WordPress stores that in your database, and those can accumulate over time and clog your database up. So just make sure you run this every once in a while. If you're not using a plugin that has this built in, you can use WP Optimize. Content Delivery Network is specifically for StackPath or Bunny CDN. So the most popular content delivery network is Cloudflare, which is a free CDN. And what this does is it hosts heavy website files on these data centers and offloads resources to uh, lighten the load on your own server. And not only that, but it reduces the geographical distance between your server and visitor. Both of those are recommended in the WordPress optimization guide, and there's absolutely no reason you shouldn't be using Cloudflare. Most cache plugins do have an option for Cloudflare. I'm not going to click it because it has my global API key. WP Fastest Cache also has an option for Cloudflare, and you should definitely set that up. If you want to use multiple content delivery networks, that will make your website load even faster. Cloudflare has their own data centers. StackPath has even more data centers. More data centers means your website is hosted on more places and it will further reduce the distance between your server and visitors and will lighten the load even more on your server. Most websites don't have to use both and can only use Cloudflare, but if you have a high traffic website and you really care about your speed, I would consider using StackPath CDN and I left a link in the video description to them if you want to use them. But that is as easy as signing up and they basically just assign you a CDN URL which you just paste right here and that's all you have to do. Heartbeat Control makes it so plugins can send real-time notifications, users get notified when other users are editing a post, and it basically creates unnecessary resource consumption. So generally you want to disable this and you can either use WP Rocket or the Heartbeat Control plugin to do this. In the add-ons tab, improved browser caching for Google Analytics makes it so your Google Analytics tracking code is hosted locally and that should fix this item in GT Metrics. Facebook Pixel, if you're using it to track your Facebook ads, then you can enable this and it should improve the loading on your website. If you're using Varnish, then enable this. And if you're using Cloudflare, you can enable this too for security. WP Rocket has a lot of great features built in that will help you set up a content delivery network, clean your database, disable heartbeat control. So like I said, double check depending on which cache plugin you're using and make sure that if it doesn't come with those features, you're installing these extra plugins to take care of those optimizations. So now we're actually going to set up Cloudflare CDN and walk you through each individual tab so you can get the most out of their content delivery network. It won't fix the GT metrics item and why it's slow just because of the way their name servers work, but if you use StackPath or Bunny CDN or Key CDN, those will fix your content delivery network item. But just because that isn't green doesn't mean it's not working and it is free, so you should always use it. All you need to do is add your website and Cloudflare will walk you through a set of pages, sign up for the free plan, they should detect your records, and then they will assign you two name servers. All you have to do is log into your account where your domain is hosted, in my case it's GoDaddy, and change those name servers to Cloudflare's. Simple as copying and pasting. 
Go ahead and save, and then go back to Cloudflare and click Done, check name servers. A lot of cache plugins will ask for your global API key and zone ID. You can find your zone ID in your Cloudflare profile under the Overview tab right here. You can find your global API key in your Cloudflare profile under the API tokens and use the same email as your Cloudflare account. And no, this isn't my global API key, so don't even try stealing it. Once you do that, then Cloudflare will send you a confirmation email, and then you can actually start configuring the tabs. First, go to your analytics, and you're not gonna see anything here because you haven't set it up for a long time, but eventually you'll see if Cloudflare is saving you a lot of bandwidth. And like I said, I migrated to Cloudways hosting about two weeks ago, so while I was using Cloudflare, I was saving a ton of bandwidth. I do plan on setting it back up, I just haven't gotten to it yet. So, while I was using it, you can actually see how much bandwidth and server resources I saved. You usually don't need to do anything in the DNS tab. The crypto tab is mainly for security and SSL. If you're not using an SSL, leave this off. If you're using an SSL and the certificate doesn't match your domain, use the full option. But if your certificate does match your domain and you want Cloudflare to validate that certificate, then use the full strict option. Scroll down and since I'm using SSL, I always want to use HTTP. Yes. HSTS ensures HTTP links become HTTPS links, and that protects your website from downgrade attacks, cookie hijacking, and it makes sure browsers only connect using HTTPS, and that users don't bypass critical security warnings. This will verify requests to your origin server and make sure they came from Cloudflare using a TLS client certificate, and that prevents users from bypassing firewall and other security settings. So you can copy everything I have here if you want, but that is mainly for security and SSL. In the firewall tab, you can create up to five firewall rules, and I have one set up to protect my WP admin. That makes it so only users in the United States can access my WP admin page. No, they can't log in, but at least to get the WP admin, you have to be in the United States. And I'm the only one that logs on my website, so that's fine. This protects insecure plugins if you want to copy that. And the next three block unwanted bots that kept hitting my website and consuming server resources. So there's a couple steps to this. First, what you want to do is install WordFence and look at your live traffic report. This will show you all bots hitting your website in real time. Obviously, Googlebot is okay and Bingbot is okay too, Yandex and some other ones. But if you see a spammy bot constantly hitting your website, then Google that host name, for example, RES Spectrum, Google that, see if other people are having issues and are reporting that as spam, and if they are, then you might want to block it. And you can do that using WordFence. So compute.amazonaws is a very popular bot, kept hitting my website and consuming resources. So I set up a firewall rule to prevent that, that's saving me a ton of resources. So I did this with three other bots. Look at your live traffic report for a couple minutes and see if the same bot is hitting your website over and over and Google its hosting to see if it's spammy. You can also use the block bad bots queries or the black hole for bad bots plugin. WordFence actually consumes a lot of resources in itself, which is why I actually don't use it. I only installed it for this video. But afterwards, I'll delete it and just use Cloudflare firewall rules as well as the black hole for bad bots plugin. So those are your firewall rules. Go to your speed tab, go to optimization, and your cache plugin already takes care of minification better than Cloudflare does, so we don't want duplicate functionality. Broly is like GZIP compression, you should enable that. Rocket Loader will asynchronously load JavaScript. Railgun used to be free and speeds up dynamic content for visitors who are far away. Looks like they made that into a premium feature. Never use AMP. 
So AMP stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages and are a Google project which supposedly makes mobile pages load faster and gives you this AMP stamp and mobile search results. So I was using AMP, but after reading Kingsta's study and how their conversions dropped by 59%, I immediately disabled AMP. And it's much easier to not use it at all than to use it and then try to disable it and set up redirects. Long story short, if you're not using AMP, I would probably just avoid it. If you do want to use AMP, this is probably the best plugin to do that, but generally I would not use AMP. So go up and go to caching. Scroll down, always online, okay, so there's nothing really you need to do here. You can set your browser cache expiration to two months. Basically what that does, it's the amount of time someone comes to a page and the cache will expire for them. So too low and it will consume a lot of resources, but too high and users might not see new content that is published on your website. So I set this for two months. Page rules are super helpful. I have three page rules set up. You can set up three for free. This one ensures that everything on my website is cached and that I'm using SSL. And the asterisk makes it so any URL of mine that matches onlinemediamasters.com and anything after that is cached and is using SSL. So WP Admin protects the WP Admin by enabling a browser integrity check. Security level is high but it also disables caching, railgun, and performance features within my WP Admin. So I don't want Rocket Loader, a railgun, or caching in my WP Admin. You always want to turn that off. And again, I use the asterisk. So this saves resources on my WP Uploads folder if you want to copy that, but those are the three page rules I recommend. The last thing that you want to do is go to your Scrape Shield settings, and if you have your email address listed on your website and you're getting a lot of spam through that, then this might help. It basically blocks bots from crawling your email address listed on your website, but still makes it visible to humans. Hotlink protection means if you have really high quality images on your website and people are copying and pasting those on their own website, it consumes your own bandwidth. You generally want to enable this so people aren't basically just copying your images. It'll kill your server resources. So enable hotlink protection. And that is Cloudflare in a nutshell. I definitely recommend setting up. If you haven't done so, I would right now. There are a lot of ways to optimize images, but I'll walk you through them step by step. GT Metrics only shows you errors for the single page you test. So that's why it's always best if you need to optimize your logo or your sidebar images, ones that appear on multiple pages, to do that first. If you see serve scaled images, that just means you need to resize large images to the correct dimensions. So if we look at my blog, this is way too large. And you can always test this by copying image address, and pasting it into a new browser window. And yes, I know my green screen is messed up. <laughs> We're gonna resize this image. GT Metrics tells you 290 by 290. I want it to be smaller than my sidebar. I want it to be about half that. So I'm gonna resize it to 135 by 135. Once you resize the image and upload it to WordPress, then you just replace the old image with the new one. Another thing I want to point out is that I know my blog's content width is 680 pixels, so I resize all my full width images to 680 pixels. Otherwise, I'm going to see serve scaled image errors. Specify image dimensions means we need to add a width and height to the HTML. So if you don't see this width and height, and it's just like this, you will see those specify image dimension errors. All you need to do is locate that image and add a width and height like this. Next, we need to losslessly compress images. So you can either do this using Smush, Imageify, ShortPixel, they're all good. I use ShortPixel, and they all support WebP format, which I would recommend looking into, or SVG, in which case you would need to use the Safe SVG plugin. Those formats will make your images look nicer and load faster. 
can select lossy, glossy, lossless, and you can also remove exit data, which is basically like the time the image was taken, what shutter speed it was using. You usually want to delete that. Look at the advanced tab. You can see my settings here, but I optimize, you know, retina images, all that good stuff. You can also use WebP format. So if you enable this and you see errors, you might have to go a different route, but you can test this in your image optimization plugin. Finally, if you're using Cloudflare, you can enter your global API key and other Cloudflare information to make sure ShortPixel is working with Cloudflare. Let's talk about plugins because they're infamous for slowing down websites. Too many plugins or even one or two high CPU plugins can kill your GT metrics report. So there's five steps in doing this. The first one is to identify slow plugins on your website. So if they show up multiple times in your report or they take a long time to load in the GT metrics waterfall tab, or you can also use the query monitor plugin to find which ones take longest to load. All you need to do is install it, go to this tab, and go to queries by components to see how long they take to load. So once you know that, then you need to replace them with lightweight plugins, and that will require some research and testing, but it is well worth it. The third is to delete commonly known high CPU plugins and just avoid these. I wrote this and I'll include a link to it in the video description, but the most common high CPU plugins are related post, statistic, sitemap, chat, calendar, page builders, and any plugin that runs ongoing scans or processes or shows up multiple times in your GT metrics report. The fourth step is to selectively disable plugins you don't use. So I use the Perf Matters plugin to do this. All you need to do is go to their script manager, and since I don't use affiliate links or WP Rich Snippets on my homepage, I disabled these so my homepage will load faster. Another example is if you only use your contact form on your contact page, you don't want that loading on every single page on your website. So you would disable it everywhere except your contact page. So the Perf Matters plugin is premium. I think it costs about $49 a year and I have a link to it in the video description, but you can also use Plugin Organizer or the Swift Performance Cache plugin also does this. Just know that Swift Performance is a cache plugin and so if you're using WP Rocket or WP Fastest Cache, you only want to use one cache plugin. The fifth and final step is to delete all plugins you're not using. I don't have a lot on my website. I only have 19, but they're lightweight. I've tested them all. I'm a big stickler on which plugins are installed on my website. And another thing I want to point out is that if you're using a plugin like Jetpack or some other really robust plugin and you're only using it for one or two features, delete it and install a plugin that only has that feature. All those features are basically more code that add to your load time. So uh, like I said, the five steps, find slow plugins in your GT metrics report and query monitor, find lightweight plugins to replace them with, selectively disable plugins using Perf Matters, Plugin Organizer, or Swift Performance, avoid high CPU plugins, and delete plugins you're not using. Last thing is if you use the Query Monitor plugin to find your slowest plugins, then you want to delete it when you're done because that in itself can cause slow load times. This section is specifically for optimizing external resources on your website, and this is everything from Gravatars to Google AdSense, embedded YouTube videos, Facebook posts, Twitter widgets, Google Fonts, Google Maps, Google Analytics. A ton of things are external resources, so I wanted to go over those really quickly to hopefully improve your GT Metrics report. So first thing is to make sure you're only using lightweight plugins and try to avoid these known high CPU plugins. You should also try to use StudioPress plugins if you're using the Genesis framework since they're all lightweight and shouldn't add to your load times. If you're using Google Fonts, try the self-hosted Google Fonts plugin which will download all Google Fonts on your website and add them to your style sheet. You can also try Chaos for web fonts. 
If you're using Discus, also try to use the conditional load plugin. If you're using a slider like Revolution Slider or Layer Slider, those can cause really slow load times. Always try to use a lightweight slider plugin like Soliloquy. If you're embedding YouTube videos on your website, make sure you enable Lazy Load for videos and replace the YouTube iframe with a preview image, which you can do in WP Rocket or use a plugin like WP YouTube Lite. If you absolutely have to use Google AdSense, and I wouldn't because affiliate links are much better, they're more profitable, and they don't add to your load time. But if you're using Google AdSense, you can run the Railgun feature. It is a premium feature in Cloudflare, but it accelerates the delivery of dynamic content, which is exactly what Google AdSense is. You can also try optimizing the ad balance on your website or follow this tutorial, which if you Google speed up Google AdSense, you will come across this and they have a lot of great tips. If you have a lot of comments on your website, then those gravatars can really slow it down. So try using a plugin like WP User Avatar, which hosts gravatars locally, or try to cache gravatars using Optimum Gravatar Cache or FB Gravatar Cache. If you're using a Google map on your website, never use it in your footer or places where it shows up on your entire website. Only use it on the pages you absolutely need the Google map. Finally, if you absolutely have to use external resources on your website, you should prefetch them. All you have to do is go to this GitHub page, which I'll leave a link to in the video description, copy all these as well as all these, and prefetch them. So in your WP Rocket tab, go to the preload tab, and you can add these all here, or you can prefetch them manually using code. But avoiding external resources is definitely the best way to do it. Use lightweight plugins, try to stay away from Google AdSense or Google Maps or those external requests that will slow down your website. Now let's clean up your WordPress dashboard, and you can do this using the Clearify plugin, which has a lot of settings, it's my only complaint about it, that it tries to go into SEO and security and everything, but you can also do a lot of other things like disabling post revisions, auto saves, removing query strings, heartbeat control, and a lot of other miscellaneous optimizations I like to call it. But that's really all you need it for if you're using a cache plugin that will already take care of minification. Um, it does let you disable widgets, which is nice. So if you're not using certain widgets, you can disable them in your dashboard. But I use the Perf Matters plugin by Kingsta, which is super easy to configure. It is a premium plugin, but it is way less bloated than Clearfly, Clearfy, which you know, super easy to configure, disabling auto saves, limiting post revisions, heartbeat control. It also has options for WooCommerce. So if you're running a WooCommerce site and you want to optimize the scripts and cart fragments, then you can do that using this plugin. I'll get into WooCommerce optimization in a little bit, but for now, just know that those options are there. The other thing I like about Perf Matters is that it comes with a script manager which lets you selectively disable plugins from loading on certain pages. So if I don't use the WP Review Rich Snippets plugin, I can disable this on my page. Another plugin you should check out, it doesn't really help speed, but Hide SEO Bloat is really cool. It basically hides all the notifications and ads in Yoast and other SEO plugins. So you can see the difference, this is without SEO Bloat and this is with SEO bloat. So you can see it really cleans up all the unnecessary stuff in Yoast. The last thing I wanna cover is that if you're not using certain features on your website, like in Yoast, or any plugin for that matter, then you should always disable them. So I don't use the readability analysis or text link counter, any of this stuff, so I have them disabled. If you don't use features in your plugins, always disable them. If you run a WooCommerce site, then that will add to your load time in itself, and there's a few things you can do to speed it up. So if you go to WooCommerce status, and you go to tools, you can clear transients, 
and clear your customer sessions. There's also a few other options in here which you can test out. Another thing you can do is install the Perf Matters plugin by Kingsta, which has a section specifically for disabling scripts and cart fragments. So if you actually look at GT Metrics reports of e-commerce sites, most of them have get refresh fragments in their waterfall tab, and it takes a long time to load. So disabling cart fragments can help. And you can also try using this GitHub code to disable cart fragments. I'll leave links to these in the video description. You can also disable WooCommerce scripts and styles. So WooCommerce themselves actually have an article about this or some GitHub code as well as a few other ones which I would recommend checking out. The other thing to know is that when you are choosing a hosting plan, WooCommerce sites generally require more server resources. So pretty much no WooCommerce site can run on a really cheap hosting plan. You should at least upgrade to a higher plan just so it can support the plugins and extra resources needed for that website. This is pretty obvious, but spam can hurt your load times. So always make sure you're running an anti-spam plugin. This is the one I use. Otherwise, you're gonna have spammers filling out your contact form and just lots of unnecessary requests on your website. Every time your page loads, a WP cron job is executed. And this will add to your server load. And basically what you wanna do is disable the WP cron jobs and replace it with a real cron job. So there's two steps in doing this and SiteGround does have a really good tutorial. All you have to do is go to your WP config file in your WordPress folder and add this code to the file. And then you replace it with a real cron job. So in SiteGround, they have an option for cron jobs as well as Cloudways, they have cron job management. You can add a real cron job so it doesn't execute every time a page loads. This will save on your server resources. Minimized redirect errors can be caused by a few things. Most likely it's because you're using a high CPU plugin or external resource on your website. There's no way around it getting rid of that other than to avoid external resources and to use lightweight plugins. But if you see it has to do with HTTPS or WWW, it means you switched to a new version and hadn't updated all those links on your website. So what I would recommend doing is use the Better Search Replace plugin and uh, correct all those links to be reflective of the new version. If you choose a theme that is bloated with a ton of features and code, then your website is going to load slow. The best way to go about it is to choose a lightweight theme that doesn't have those features and rely on plugins to only add the functionality you need. So I always recommend StudioPress, I actually use their Outreach Pro theme. It is a church theme, but I customize it to be a marketing website. So you really don't need to pay attention to the content just as much as the design and uh, the fact that it loads fast. So Studio Press is a great place to go. Uh, if you're looking for an e-commerce theme, Flat Sum and Astra are very popular. And I have links in the video description if you want to use them, but I always recommend a Studio Press just because Yoast uses them. So does Matt Cuts, and they're even recommended by Matt Mullenweg. I wanted to end this video with a complete list of speed optimization plugins I recommend checking out. For your cache plugin, I usually recommend WP Rocket since it has a lot of features built in that most cache plugins don't. And if you're using it, then you usually don't have to use WP Optimize, CDN Enabler, or any of these plugins. But if you're using WP Fastest Cache or Swift Performance, it might not have those built in and you will need to install a couple extra plugins. But for free, these are the two I recommend. If you're using SiteGround, they do have an SG Optimizer plugin which uses server-side caching, which is faster than the file-based caching used by most cache plugins. 
And if you're using Cloudways, they also have the Breeze plugin. If you're using WP Engine or GoDaddy, they blacklist cache plugins because they use their own built-in caching system, in which case I would use Auto Optimize. WP Optimize cleans your database. CDN Enabler is for Key CDN or Stack Path or Bunny CDN for adding a CDN URL and setting up your content delivery network. WP YouTube Lite will lazy load videos. Self-hosted Google Fonts, these will host your Google fonts locally. This will host your Google Analytics tracking code locally, which should fix the leverage browser caching issue and GT metrics. Heartbeat control stops the Heartbeat API from running on your website. Short pixel is for image optimization. Smush and Imageify are also good, but these will compress images, remove exif data, and do a lot of other optimizations, including using the new WebP format. Perf Matters is a premium plugin by Kingsa, which lets you selectively disable plugins from loading on certain pages, as well as optimize WooCommerce by disabling cart fragments and scripts. It will also help you clean up your admin. Plugin Organizer does the same thing as the script manager of Perf Matters. It lets you selectively disable plugins from running on certain pages. Clearify cleans up your WP admin. This is for caching gravatars if you have lots of comments on your website. WordFence is mainly for the live traffic report for identifying those bad bots that are constantly hitting your website like Amazon. And to block those, you can either use Cloudflare firewall rules or one of these two plugins. Query Monitor is great for identifying general speed issues on your website, as well as finding which plugins take longest to load. GT Metrics runs a scan and saves it within your WordPress dashboard so you can actually view your reports and track your performance in your dashboard. This is mainly if you want to test out different hosts and see the performance of each of them. Display PHP version shows you which PHP version you're running. And always make sure you're upgraded to the latest version like PHP. 7.3. PHP Compatibility Checker makes sure all your plugins are compatible with recent PHP versions so you can upgrade, but it doesn't have good reviews because the scan can mess up sometimes. AMP for WordPress is for accelerated mobile pages, and like I said, I would avoid that if you can because it screws up your design, and Kingsta's conversions drop by about 59% when adding AMP, so it's best just to avoid AMP. The only reason Better Search replaces in here is if you need to optimize multiple images that appear on multiple pages on your website, you can actually use the Better Search Replace plugin to find and replace images so you can bulk optimize those images instead of going through each page and updating that image one by one. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, drop me them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. Otherwise, I also have a lot of tutorials on my website everything from basically everything I covered in this video to speed optimization plugins and how to configure different cache plugins if you need help with that, how to optimize images, Cloudflare, a lot of good stuff. Thanks for sticking with me and it took a long time to make this video. If you wouldn't mind at least telling me your improvements and whether this helped you improve your GT Metrics report, I would really appreciate it. Otherwise, you have yourself a good day.